what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out vince mcmahon bad news getting sued wwe and disney came wwe return other wrestling news still a lot of stuff is happening with vince mcmahon's return uh apparently now uh he is getting sued potentially so we're gonna see what's going on here and also maybe disney is in the works of trying to purchase wwe who knows it's just a lot of craziness going on right now um but i appreciate all the love and support man this video is brought to you by or brought to us by uh, wrestlemania make sure you go subscribe to him if you haven't already let's get straight into this one man what is going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with another video it's a big night on dynamite as the elite battle death triangle in the final match of their best of seven series for the AEW's trios championship join us now as we look at the 11th december edition of dynamite as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including vince mcmahon being sued and i actually did check out dynamite i know i didn't stream it uh i was actually kind of busy at the time so i wasn't able to but i did check out dynamite i did like the alan page promo uh it was uh, for a second i thought <coughs> he was about to announce he has to retirement or retire but i love to swear there Love the MJF promo. Um, I'm liking what they're doing with him and and, and Brian Danielson. Um, and I did see the the Death Triangle match. Uh, Death Triangle versus um, uh, the Elite. It was a fun match. What I expected it to. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's just crazy how they ended up losing the titles or being stripped to the titles to only get the titles back maybe a month two months later you know it's kind of interesting how that all played out and this whole best of seven series it kind of got predictable in a sense of you knew they weren't gonna sweep them and then they pretty much came back <laughs> they won every single match after they were down to like the last last possible chance they could win it, it definitely came off predictable but still an enjoyable ladder match definitely go check it out if you haven't already kane's return at raw 30th and other legends a wwe couple getting married nick khan meets with disney ceo and espn Ooh. and much more be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily be an interesting videos. one and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists see what's also going check on out our new channel wrestlemania shorts now, as always, we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Page prevails. But Adam Page finally got payback oh, yeah. against John Moxley. I did see that too. I, Page actually getting a win over John Moxley. That was a pretty cool moment. Uh, John doesn't, he rarely loses in AEW. So, and then they went with the whole it. Now, John Moxley had to have some medical attention. They went with the injury angle as well after that. Solid match, solid match. Defeating Mox in a brutal bout that showed Hangman can hang, well, no pun intended, with AEW's toughest competitors. Moxley's past boasts about how tough he is and how soft his opponents are rang hollow last night when Page defeated Moxley after going blow for blow against him. It's unknown whether these two have settled their differences, but whatever happens, the win was a good way to boost Page's career, which has been stuck in neutral since his tepid title. No, it was a much AEW needed win. Champion. He needed Number that win. Two, AEW continues good storytelling. The WWE and AEW both take their time letting storylines play out, but this week's Raw and Dynamite showed how to do things the wrong way and the right way. Both shows are taking time to forward storylines through the usual blend of matches, interviews and angles, but unlike Raw, Dynamite was an exciting show from start to finish. The 9th December Raw- And shout out to the crowd, man. I will say this, Dynamite, they have the- those are the hardcore fans. It's not- it's barely any casuals. In those crowds. That's the one thing I can say that Dynamite has working for them. Their crowd atmosphere is fantastic. Great. I wish WWE had more of the hardcore fans in attendance. You have to go to certain cities to get that. Every show that Dynamite is held in, every city, hardcore fans. And the crowd, they show out. So, shout out to you guys out there. As opposed to last night's Dynamite which moved quickly and kept fans engaged. Number three, Adam Cole is back, baby. That Adam was, that was nice was to see that. Surprise as fans have wondered just when Cole would be back in action after being concussed at Forbidden Door. Cole cut a promo that showed his frustration over recovering from his assorted injuries. It also showed his apparent new attitude as he thanked the fans for supporting him, even though he gave them no reason to. 
Cole seems poised for another main event run, and if he can stay healthy, he'll have plenty of quality opponents to battle. He will. Number four, Death Triangle versus Elite Ladder Match. Banger. B A N G E R. This was a fun no match. Business being on weekly television and belonged on a pay per view. Nonetheless, kudos to AEW for over delivering here. The bout was a perfect end to the two trios teams' best of seven series, and it'll hopefully pave the way for the trios title becoming a top belt. AEW has so many good teams, including trios teams, and this belt is custom made for showcasing them every week. While we don't like to see wrestlers take as many sick bumps as all six men did on yeah, TV, nah, there's a no lot of brutal that bumps. This match was out of this world. Number five. And here's one of those things. Like I said, it was a it, it, obviously it was predictable. You knew the elite were winning. You know, I, I, it would have been cool if they did pull a little swerve. I have Death Triangle winning. I thought that would have been a nice little swerve. But nevertheless, uh, I probably wouldn't have had a best of seven. Maybe do a best of five, in my personal opinion. But definitely. Uh, their matches have been the highlight of the shows when they were, you know, doing them. So I, I can't say that was a, a pretty fun match to watch. Hikaru Shida Wasn't that bad. Turn tease. Is she turning heel? Well, the former AEW Women's Champion seemingly slipped up when she slid a kendo stick to Britt Baker instead of Shida's friend Tony Storm and Soraya. However, as fans noticed last week, Hikaru didn't seem pleased when Soraya picked Storm as a tag partner. If there is a heel turn coming, it could open up AEW's women's division, which could benefit from a heel of Sheeta's caliber. They need Number help. Six, Renee Paquette delivers. AEW president Tony Khan should take pride in hiring Renee Paquette as a former WWE personality to deliver the goods every week when she interviews wrestlers. She knew how to inject the right tone into each interview, whether it's a sense of fun like last night's best friend segment, adding an extra level to each segment without overshadowing it. And Dan Howes and goofiness, goodness, that's corny <laughs> aff, and goofy as hell, but, but there's something eerily entertaining about Dan Housen. The man who boasts he's very nice and very evil had a hilarious interaction backstage with actor Paul Walter Hauser. Dan Housen referring to Hauser as Paul Walter Hausen was so ridiculous. Oh, that's, um, what's his name from, um, I can't even, uh, Cobra Kai, yeah. What's, I, I can't think of his uh, the the character's name in Cobra Kai. Y'all know who I'm talking about if you've seen the show. But that's dope. I I I must have I didn't see this part or whatnot. But that was it was that's pretty cool that he was on the show. Funny, but that was a good. What about the bad? Is number one burying another big man. We we'll keep this brief because we mentioned it before. But Big Bill is the latest wrestler over six two to get buried in AEW, <laughs> having Hook suplex the former big cast. Whoa! Was to watch as you can see the big man's AEW career crumble as he crashed to the mat. AEW may need to put a sign outside its ring that reads "No one over six two allowed on this ride." <laughs> care about Ortiz and Kingston trust issues? High drama last night as Eddie Kingston and Ortiz argued whether about they could trust each other. Quite the question considering they have a match against the House of Black on Friday's Rampage. Hmm. But here's the problem. Does anyone care about this storyline? This storyline seems like it's been on the back burner so long that it seems to have come out of nowhere. That's problematic in itself, but Ortiz's lack of exposure on AEW TV only makes it worse. Yeah, man. Don't y'all remember when Ortiz was having... uh? He was having some pretty good feuds and some pretty hot. I was loving what they were doing with him and Jericho, and then it just kind of it, it 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 got convoluted with the the uh black uh um the oh, I can't even think of their name uh the Blackpool Combat Club and uh, JAS. Um, it, it kind of got convoluted. I was really you know was really loving what they were doing with him. Like, just him being kind of in more of the main event scene uh, without the title being involved. I was in, really enjoying that. And then they just kind of kind of really didn't go nowhere. And then he had the issue with Sammy Guevara and situation with that. So, it, it's like he kind of dropped down on the card. And, uh, yeah, man, I would like to see more of him in a more prominent role. But we'll see what happens. Now, there was nothing downright ugly as AEW bounced back from an uneventful show last week and aired several main event worthy matches including Moxley vs. Paige, Hater and Baker vs. Storm and Soraya and the epic ladder match. What did you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down what below. What a bad Dynamite. Now, let's for the special the for the news. parts I was able to catch. Now we get into the nitty gritty man. Now first we looks at Vince McMahon being sued. The WWE News is the latest in Vince McMahon's WWE saga as Vinny Mac is being sued by a WWE shareholder. This is the first public sign that McMahon's bid to regain control of the WWE is being challenged. Bloomberg Law reports a lawsuit was filed on 11th January. And here are some details. 
WWE Chief Vince McMahon, who returned to the company in early January after re-signing amid a wave of sexual harassment allegations, is facing investor litigation over claims that he pushed aside the board to illegally install himself as chairman. Oh. The lawsuit isn't a surprise, as we discussed the possibility of shareholder lawsuits as soon as the news broke of Vince's intent to return to power. Uh -oh. Also noted, a shareholder sued McMahon in Delaware's Chancery Court, accusing him of wielding his 81% voting control to oust three board members, replace them with loyalists, and push through bylaw oh. changes that would impose his will on the board and WWE. Now, it's unknown whether additional lawsuits will be filed. However, the WWE stock could drop if more lawsuits are filed. Yeah. As a result, it could be problematic to sell the company if the stock drops significantly. And don't be shocked to see lawsuits filed that some might see as an opportunity to cash in on the situation. After all, if the WWE looks eager to sell, some opportunistic individuals may feel the company will pay off lawsuits just to make them go away so it can proceed with a sale. Next up, Ew. the reason WWE board members resigned. A recent SEC filing is revealing the real reason why two WWE board members, Ignace Lahoud and Manjit Singh, resigned following Mr. McMahon's return. While Messrs. Loud and Singh agreed with the board's decision to explore the company's strategic alternatives, they did not agree with Mr. McMahon's return at this time. Oh. Kate Side Seats noted, There was plenty of informed speculation about Loud and Singh's exits, mostly based on Loud's role on the board's audit committee and Singh's as, among other things, lead investigator into Vince's mm -hmm. hush money and sexual misconduct scandals. But now we know. What do you guys make of these two resignations? It makes sense. Once they found out he was coming back, obviously, if one of them was in head of the investigation of all this which put this into motion of course all right well it's time for me to go ahead and head out because if they weren't gonna leave guess what vince was gonna fire them as simple as that or make you know life for them very difficult he, yeah nah it, it made sense as soon as, as soon as that came out and then the reports was that you know the, uh, one of them was a lead investigator like head of the investigation of this whole situation yeah, it made sense for them to leave. I mean, I would leave too. If I know someone that I was pursuing to get out the company is coming back, I'm out. I'm all right, come my losses. Do you believe there will be any more? Next up, WWE Raw 30th Returning Legends. The guest list for Raw's 30th anniversary celebration continues to grow. Here are the legends in the Hall of Fame is currently scheduled to appear on the 23rd January show. Ric Flair, Kane, X-Pac, and Tatanka. Okay. Kurt Angle has said the WWE invited him, but he hasn't confirmed his appearance. In addition, the show will feature appearances by SmackDown superstars Roman Makes Reigns sense. and Ronda Rousey. Uh. Next up, Nick Khan <laughs> poised for payday if WWE sells. The current WWE CEO Nick Khan may be poised for a big payday if the WWE is sold. Kate Side Seeds recently remarked about some comments made by podcaster Conrad Thompson concerning Khan. On a recent episode of his What Happened When podcast, Conrad Thompson claimed he's heard that if Nick Khan helps facilitate the sale of WWE, he'll earn a bonus worth more than AEW's TV contract is for a year. Whoa! Khan is used to wheeling and dealing thanks to his days working as an agent. From there, he helped the WWE negotiate Damn. its Big Bucks TV rights That's deal a with lot ABC, of Fox, <laughs> as well as WWE's subsequent deal to air the WWE Network to Peacock. Rumor has it that he was in LA meeting with the representatives from Disney and ESPN Ooh. reportedly discussing a WWE sale. Next up is Jay White headed Ooh. to AW or WWE. That's, that's, that's some money, bro. If you're making more than what a, a, a TV contract that AEW is getting for a, whole, for a whole year, oh yeah. It's advantageous for them to sell, especially for, for Nick Khan. That's, that's extra bread in his pockets. WWE. Woo. There's big news for fans of New Japan Pro Wrestling sensation Jay White, as rumor has it Switchblade is leaving Japan soon and headed to the US. We recently discussed White's rumored exit in a story at our website, noting the former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is booked in a Loser Leaves Japan match in February, which has spurred speculation he's on his way out. Uh. According to Fightful Select, WWE also long expressed interest in Hiku Liu, which puts the results of the match in doubt. Those on the New Japan Pro Wrestling roster are the belief that Jay White wants to be in the US for the time being, well, to all that, WWE was heavily recruiting him, which White himself confirmed to Fightful happened in early 2021, and we're told mm. that only accelerated. Ace told us prior to 2021 he'd never been approached by AEW, but has since enjoyed his experiences there. Mm. Would you guys like to see Jay White in either AEW or WWE? Let us know in the comments down below. Not too familiar with all his work, um, but uh I, I i think it was he was at forbidden door if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong I believe he was at forbidden door um 
It seemed like he enjoyed what he was doing in AEW just for that just for that door uh door just for that show itself. It seemed like he was enjoying himself. Um, honestly, if I had to really really break it down and think about this, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. With Triple H in charge, yeah, you know, I, I think that you know that that could be interesting, but. At the same time, I don't know if WWE should be getting anybody anytime soon, especially if we don't even know what the landscape is going to be and who's going to hold on the damn company. So I, I don't know if that would be something that happens relatively soon. But, you know, hey, could be interesting. Let it, let me know down below all the uh, um, all the all the, the J White fans. Let me know down below. Do you guys think, you know, he should go to WWE or do you guys think he should go to AEW? Let me know down below. Below, and finally, a WWE couple getting married. Last but not least, congrats oh, yeah. to WWE superstar Ricochet, Ricochet and SmackDown mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ring announcer Samantha Irvin on their recent engagement. Congrats to them, Ricochet man. Posted a picture of the ring on Instagram along with it. this message. Congrats to the couple as we wish them lasting happiness. But they have it, folks. The wildest. That's thing. that's that's awesome to see. I saw a couple of you guys comment on Twitter with the meme, the Yu-Gi-Oh meme. It should have been me. Come on, man. Let, let Ricochet be happy. He deserves his happiness, man. But this was an interesting video. Once again, did get a chance to check out AEW. Enjoyed the parts I definitely did check out. And it was it was a pretty enjoyable show. And the crowds for AEW Dynamite, y'all are always on 11. And I appreciate it. It makes the shows even that much more better. But comment down below. Let me know. Do you think Disney could be the company that could finally buy <laughs> uh wwe they do have the money and how would y'all feel if disney was to buy i know a lot of us we would probably be devastated if the saudis bought the company but how would y'all feel if mickey mouse himself buys the company let me know i really want to get y'all opinion on that do y'all think disney would do right by wwe who knows man but I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.